Hello, Green Tree family. We're the Van Zees, wishing you a very happy Advent. Uh, I'm Ben Van Zee. I'm a senior at Westminster this year. Um, this is my littlest sister, Addie. She's in sixth grade at North Kirkwood Middle this year. Uh, and this is my other sister, Kate, who is a freshman this year at Westminster with me. And uh, this is my dad, Eric, and he's one of the pastors here at Green Tree Community Church. And this is my favorite mom, <laughs> Uh, Jen Van Zee, who is a counselor at Green Street Community also. He's my favorite son. <laughs> we love Advent, don't we, Jen? Yes, we do. And so um, tonight we were going to bring some, or we brought some of our um, favorite, one of our favorite traditions, and that's the um, nativity scene. And so I have them spread around. And this one right here is, it's been a childhood favorite. It actually started out, it was Ben's when he was like, I don't know, four years old. And it's a play mobile, but Addie, it's been Addie's favorite for years since <laughs> Ben outgrew it. But um, Addie, you want to talk about mm -hmm. why you love it? Well, I just get to use like my imagination and it's just really fun um, learning Jesus' story. And what I love as a parent is that she's actually learning the story and it's a, it, you know, it's history. It took place really in real time. And so for her to be able to own it and really know that these were real characters and even the animals. But it's really one that our whole family has enjoyed and I love that it's tangible, it's hands-on, the kids can learn. And it's just helping them um, remember that this was an event that took place in real actual history and in time. So um, that's a favorite and so I love collecting different um, nativities from different areas and so when Eric would go on missions trips or the kids I was always like bring me back a nativity because mm -hmm. I think it reflects so much of God's character that there's there's nuances that are found in different nativities. And because over the summers um, going on missions trips and summer camps and all the things that we used to do um, a lot of times over Christmas vacation, we would travel, right Kate? Yeah, and we normally get to go and visit um, our grandparents or our cousins, our aunts and uncles, and sometimes we even get to go like jet skiing in the winter um, down in Florida and whatnot, and so that's really fun. It's been a lot of fun. Over the next couple of weeks, as we prepare for Christmas, the celebration of Jesus' birthday, we'll take a digital journey together through Advent to reflect on this glorious, life-changing event. Today we are looking backwards to look forward. How many of you have ever eaten a fortune cookie and read the fortune from the inside? <laughs> Can you uh, think of uh, any particular funny fortunes that you've ever received or that stand out? We have a few, haven't we? <laughs> Sometimes the messages are funny or poetic, but typically the messages are general enough to where it sounds good and it might describe a variety of moments in a person's day. When we talk about the prophecies or future promises of Jesus' birth, we're not talking about a generic message that might or may or may not come true. We are talking about hundreds of specific details that were described in what it would look like to have the chosen rescuer, Jesus himself, come into the world. Follow along with us as we read from Isaiah about what kind of rescuer God was sending to the world to be our hero. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, and the staff for his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior, and battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child was born, to us a son was given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and, and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. What do we learn about God from this passage? God promise, promises a rescue plan for his people. The hard stuff they are experiencing right now will one day come to an end because of the promised rescuer. God loves to care for his people and renew their joy. 
He promises to send someone who will be a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, which is quite the title. Imagine someone leading you who is wise and knows how to make good plans, who is big enough to protect you from any danger, who is so full of love for you that it lasts forever and longs to take away your anxiety and comfort you always. This is Jesus in our lives and he is coming back again to bring us into his perfect kingdom. In this passage, the people are wandering around in the darkness, which means a time of great sadness and or heaviness, a season of life without hope, a spiritual heaviness or a feeling of loneliness or abandonment. How have you felt this kind of darkness this year? I know I have. I know with this COVID, it's made us feel alone. It's made us feel like we have to isolate at times. Isaiah is saying that the coming rescuer will bring light to this dark world. I'm so ready for light. I'm so ready for our rescuer to come. The child turned ruler that God promises is the one who brings peace and comfort and protection. So this week, Take time as a family in your, or in your own quiet space to reflect on which of these names that you need to remember most right now in this season. Do you need to remember that Jesus is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, or maybe the Prince of Peace? Thank you. Will you please pray with us? Dear Father, thank you for tonight, and um, we look to you as the one that brings hope. And um, thank you for Advent, uh, a season that has been very weary for us um, in our country and around the world. We look to you as a Savior. And um, Father, I pray that you would bring comfort into our homes, that you would bring hope and joy that only you can give. And so, Father, we look to you in this season. In your name we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas and goodbye. <laughs>